What's shaking, everyone? So today we've got another episode of Know Your Candidate for the 2020 elections, and we are going a little bit niche today, but hey, I think it's a very important race because Arizona, for whatever fucking reason, might be a battleground state. And to me, there's nothing more important than local government because local government looks after everybody that's in their city, and they know, for the most part, what the needs of their city are as opposed to what the governor knows and definitely what the president knows. So if you don't have the right person in your city, you're already setting yourself up for failure. So to look at the very important mayoral race in Phoenix, we've got the incumbent Kate Galago, and then we have her only other viable challenger in Marissa Hamilton. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you a little bit of background on where these two ladies sit on issues as well as their history. And both of them have very interesting histories to say the least. I think by the end of this video I can perfectly summate what both individuals are proposing for the city of Phoenix as well as yeah, give my endorsement for whatever that's worth. But before we dig into that guys, I if you appreciate these videos that I do, or also if you have a mayoral, Congress, senatorial seat that you'd like analyzed, feel free to drop that in the comments section below. And while you're down there, if you don't mind hitting that subscribe button, as well as dropping a like on that video, I'd greatly appreciate it because the support lately has been overwhelming and I thank you all very much for watching. So let's just go ahead and dig right into this. So the incumbent here, Mayor Kate Galago, I've got her about page pulled up just to give some background, like I said I was going to. So Mayor Kate has spent her career working to find solutions to complex problems. Sure. Kate's record for results include leading the campaign to pass Phoenix's citywide transportation plan through 2050. I don't think anybody that's watching this video is right now going to be able to take advantage of that, but uh, hey, here's hoping. And working to ensure equal pay for equal work. I think there's a few amendments that already take care of that, but uh, by all means. Since being elected to Phoenix City Council in 2013 and elected mayor in 2019, Kate has helped make Phoenix a leader in job creation and has worked with police and firefighters to improve public safety and keep neighborhoods safe. So let's take a look at one of uh, Mayor Kate's mandates to keep the public safe like she says that she's done oh so well in the past, what, 10 months that she's been in office in the mayor's chair? Phoenix requires face coverings. Guess what? It's mandatory. Everywhere you go, get that mask on, regardless. And she touts this as being some kind of... Phoenix was a leader in this... Um, respect well you call it being a leader i call it being paranoid but the only thing that she did in response to covid was these goofy face mask ordinance but she also kind of likes to sweep this under the rug when the federal government was handing out additional funds to the larger cities phoenix received three hundred thousand dollars and most of that was allocated for proper PPE for people, for the people on the front lines, as well as doing testing. And if you're allocated 300,000 and you have a very large populace in Phoenix, how much of that money do you think should go towards testing? I'll save you all the guessing game. Under 4%, less than $12,000 of the 300,000 that was allocated for COVID relief was uh, allocated to testing. But instead, Mayor Kate will just uh, bitch that FEMA didn't set up a testing facility like it's like a lot of Democrats. They just don't understand that the federal government's not here to look after everything. You're in charge of the city, Kate. You're the one who's supposed to be looking after the testing and keeping your citizens safe. You claim to keeping neighborhoods safe. So a little more fluff that she has on her page here. Kate is passionate about building a Phoenix that works for everyone. She led the effort to the city to partner with AARP to better serve older adults. Which 
in Phoenix itself, it is one of the younger cities in comparison to Tucson, Flagstaff, and, um, you know, Sun City as well. But hey, why not? Why let the facts get in the way? You're telling a good story here. You partnered with AARP. Terrific. She believes that everyone should have access to cutting edge med medical care and has been the city council lead on expanding Phoenix's biomedical campus. Here's where things start to get real tricky for old Mayor Kate here. Kate is a member of the bipartisan coalition Building America's Future. Now, I don't need to read any more of this before immediately red flags start popping up. Whenever you get something that's so seemingly patriotic in working in tandem with the Democrats, uh, just red flags go off in my head. To maybe that's my bias. Fair enough. If you tune in for that, well, guess what? We're going to be covering a lot more races and uh, a bunch more red flags are going to be popping up. So I saved us all the trouble. <clears throat> We're going to go over what Building America's Future is. So Building America's Future is an educational fund, is a bipartisan coalition of affected elected officials dedicated to bringing about a new era of U.S. investment in infrastructure that enhances our nation's prosperity and quality of life. Sounds great. Let's see who are members of this. All right, so we have Ray LaHood, former U.S. Secretary of Transportation, Illinois, elected under the Obama administration. Okay, so we got a Democrat. And Ed Rendell, former governor of Pennsylvania. Also a Democrat. Founding chair, Michael Bloomberg. The man was elected as a Republican in New York, but he is a dyed-in-the-wall Democrat. Well, if you managed to catch his uh, castration live on TV from uh, Elizabeth Warren, you are well aware of that fact as well. And this one hurts my heart a fair amount. Arnold Schwarzenegger, former, former governor of California. Yeah, um, I'm going to be fair on this one. Uh, he was a mediocre rhino. Like, what did he actually accomplish for California? He's certainly a fuck up a lot better than Jerry Brown and Eric Garcetti for sure. Well, not Eric Garcetti. An old door-to-door -door vacuum salesman. Gavin Newsom, but let's be fair. Your four main chair members are, I wouldn't call that bipartisan by any means. Yeah. And members. Oh, look at that. Mayor Kate. I'm not making this up and she's not attributing herself to a false cause anyways. Now let's see what they are actually about. We got through what they claim to be about. Now here's their get the facts page. So they are very into redoing national level infrastructure, which is a perfectly laudable idea, without a doubt. But they also want to tax the fuck out of everybody. A mileage-based user fee. Oh, terrific. Also known as a road user charge or a vehicle miles traveled fee. is a user fee that is based on the number of miles driven. The Fixing America Surface Transportation Act included... $95 million in competitive grants for states to explore this concept. Terrific. The federal gas tax is 18.4 cents. 18.4 cents per liter. Or, the federal gas tax is 18.4 cents per gallon and has not been increased since 93. Good. And has lost 65% of its purchasing power. So guess what? That means, that means that they want to raise the price of your gas directly and marry... Uh, and uh, Mayor Kate is a proud member of this board. If you want to do any more digging, obviously everything's going to be linked in the description below. But this isn't the only group that Mayor Kate has been proudly championing ever since she entered the public sphere. She's also been endorsed by Democracy for America when she first ran for governor when the special election was called in 2017 she was endorsed by democracy for america and you see here for the upcoming election she's also been continuously endorsed right there yeah one of 17 additional democratic mayors that are up for election this year now what company does she share this with who else has been endorsed 
by Democracy for America. Well, in Arizona itself, you got... Uh, Ooh, one name really sticks out there. Adrian Fontes, the guy who is in charge of the, uh, let's say, suspect election of Kirsten Cinema, A man who knows his way around some emergency polling booths. Okay, maybe that's just one, but let's just take... Ah, fuck it. We're just going to go ahead and cut with the horse shit. Let's get down here to Michigan, Rashida Tlaib, Minnesota, Elan Omar, and New York, the... Saddled one herself, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Mayor Kate's in bed with a bunch of radicals. Now, is that with the people of Phoenix? A state that was once blood red. A state that has been drained of any sort of conservatism by that withered old war hawk, John McCain. A state that was home to Barry Goldwater, the fundamental figure in modern libertarianism yeah no not in my opinion i'm very suspect about mayor kate and uh hopefully you are as well but at least there is a very viable alternative i do like marissa hamilton quite a bit in doing my research for this video so, this isn't her first time running for any kind of elected office. She ran in 2016 and 2018. She had the balls to run against John McCain directly for a senatorial seat. Granted, she was never going to win because um, the entire GOP was, well, it's been designed around John McCain. And she actually ran as a libertarian and she got uh, about just about 1,300 votes and that's respectable because she claimed there's a interview that she gave here at the end of 2019 where she describes that entire situation. We'll go through that. But uh, yeah, she really stands up for what she believes in. And uh, here on Ballopedia, she gave a interview and everything seems very agreeable to anybody who has libertarian or conservative ideas. I Her three main terms for wanting to be the mayor. She wants to make Phoenix safe, protect small businesses, and fight city corruption. Now, she's also very big on bringing back manufacturing. And anybody who's familiar with Phoenix and Arizona itself knows that uh, copper, cotton, cattle, and citrus and climate... Climate? Citrus and climate are what... <laughs> Arizona has been founded on and what it continues to strive for today. And there are a bunch of large headquarters that are right in Phoenix and in Arizona itself. Like the most prominent ones. Well, to me, the one that really sticks out is Honeywell's aerospace division is centered right in Phoenix. And with what Elon Musk is doing, there is going to be a big opportunity for doing any kind of space development in the near future. So if she's serious about bringing manufacturing back to Phoenix, um, there's your candidate, guys. So outside of what she said in the interview here, she is also a pro-life candidate and very pro-gun candidate. And she has a good reason why. Because there was a... Second Amendment rally that took place earlier this year in February here. And we're just going to go ahead and zip right down to what she had to say on the matter. So this was a rally in support of curtailing elected officials' abilities to limit Second Amendment use. And boy, she has a, um, a real strong case to make. Directly from Marissa, I had to face violence right then and there being completely unarmed, no one around, so the only thing I could do was flee, Hamilton said. And I had to wait for the police to come. If the government's going to take away my ability to carry, then they should have the then they should have to protect me. And if they're not going to protect me, they should have to pay for they should have to pay for the fact that I had to be a victim of violence under their watch. So she is a very staunch advocate for you know, 
in the Second Amendment rights as she's had to face the ramifications of gun-free zones that were established by idiots who think that uh, by putting up signs saying this is a gun-free zone, criminals are going to adhere to that because um, signs tend to work with people who want to commit violence, obviously, right? So here we have an older interview, well, older in the context of that rally was in February of this year, and this was in October of 2019. And it just kind of gives you a little bit more background on where Marissa's standing. It says here, yeah, I misspoke when I said 1,300. She got actually just about 1,600 votes against McCain in 2016. So she knew that she wasn't going to win against McCain, but... What she did say here was, when I ran, I didn't really run to win. I ran because it gave me a platform to talk about foster kids in a broken system in the state of Arizona and nationally. With foster care, they were... Oh. With foster care, there were and some... And are some... With foster care, there were and are some real tragedies in our system in Arizona. And now I plan on running and I plan to win. So then at the bottom of this interview, it kind of recaps how Marissa left and then returned back to the GOP because, well, especially in the States, there's two parties that you can be elected under. And there's one that seems right now to be under a little bit of a revolution. And the other one is completely batty and under a different type of revolution. So the interviewer asked for the person or people who might be just looking. Oof. For the person or people who might just be looking at what is happening politically right now and wanting to give up on it, what would you say to them? He said, I left the GOP for one and one half years. Marissa said, I left the GOP for one and one half years. In fact, I called myself an anarchist for a while. When the voice of the people... When the voice of the people is manufactured, it has... When the voice of the people has become as manufactured as it is, oh, when the voice of the people is manufactured, it has become an industry. When the voice of the people is manufactured, it has become an industry. That makes sense. Yet at the city council level, I saw the power of the people. Don't ignore local government and don't, oh, don't ignore local government and the involvement and good you can do there. So what I see here is a candidate who is for the empowerment of the people and the other one that is constantly trying to slap a band-aid on things. One is trying to empower and the other one is trying to create a dependency by Mayor Kate is looking to create more public transit to do more nanny things like oh just let me look after everything and everything will be fine just wear your mask in public don't worry about it we'll just hunker down and react to everything whereas marissa has shown that she's willing to stand up for what she believes in she believes in fundamentally american ideals and she's also willing to go the extra mile to stand up for what she believes in the final article we got here Mugshot or campaign photo? Arizona governor candidate arrested. This is quite hilarious, and this is not a dig by any means. I just thought that it perfectly highlights what somebody will do in order to stand up for their beliefs. If you are an unknown politician, a mugshot is not the traditional way to introduce yourself to voters, but libertarian candidate for governor Marissa Hamilton says she wanted to get arrested. Phoenix police took Hamilton into custody during a small protest and over child care yesterday. When she refused to get out of the street, police arrested her for obstruction and booked her into jail. She said that's terrific. In a Facebook video posted Saturday morning, Hamilton explained why she wanted to get arrested. I did this because I haven't fully launched my campaign yet, and it would be a good way to go incognito in our jails as a normal person and see how you're treated, Hamilton said. Well, she hasn't efficiently launched her camp. Ugh. So yeah, like I was saying before we got into that last, that last article there, it's, ugh. it's like I was saying before we got into the last article there, there is a very clear divide between 
somebody who's looking to empower and allow people to prosper and another one who just wants to nanny and another one who surrounds herself with just terrible people and bad ideas and very detrimental for the growth of a you know a burgeoning city even prior to the pandemic phoenix was booming because a it's built on fundamentally conservative <clears throat> positions and ideas and everybody wants to flock there it's the third i do believe it is the third most popular place for um disaffected californians to go to unfortunately they drag their shitty politics along with them but uh Perhaps they can be reformed if a proper leader is installed. And I believe that is Marissa Hamilton. She would be the first Republican or conservative adjacent long-term mayor that Phoenix has had since Skip Ramsey's reign in from 94 to 04. So it's been... 16 years since they've had any kind of uh, stable leadership. So, hey man, your guys' choice is patently clear in my opinion. Marissa Hamilton all the way. That's the end of this episode of Know Your Candidate for the 2020 elections. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And like I said earlier, if there's any races that you'd like for me to cover and dig into, uh, uh, nothing's too little, nothing's too big. So, there will be more episodes of this in the near future, guys. Anyways, I've been Don Consuelo. I want you guys to follow your gut. Get after it. Take care, everyone.